Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 492, How We Age. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. So Dr. Moffin and I have been doing a lot of research and reading, and we've been going to conferences and learning things that are new uh, for doctors, new for the field of medicine in its approach to understanding human health. And it seems that medicine is moving in a new direction. We're not just taking a symptom that presents it like whack-a-mole, here's a <laughs> symptom, boom, we solve that problem. Mm-hmm. And, and we're looking more systemically at human beings, how their body systems work, and what the aging process is, and where and how those systems start to break down. And uh-huh. as we learn that, we're also learning some things that we think might prevent that breakdown, might intervene and help us not have that system break down. Uh-huh. And the assumption being that if we can do that, we'll live healthier and longer. Am I phrasing that correctly? Yes. I'm, the, the idea is that we live so much longer now than we ever have before, and, and the generation who's being born now may live to 100. That may okay. be their average age of death. Now it's 83, 84. Mm-hmm. But, that, but that could yeah. get Jump to up. 100 by the time these, ch- these babies are, are yeah. old. Yeah. So in that, we spend a lot of our life in the time past our reproductive life. So we were really built kind of like the the miles on your car, you're really built for 100,000 miles. We were really built for 45 years until our until our process of reproduction stopped, then the next generation started basically. Uh-huh. And so 45 years was about it and then medicine and intelligence and all of the things that make us human and make us more than animals and our, our spirit to do something better and better and better has brought us to new discoveries on how to live better after 45, since we spend so much time in that, in that um, age group between 45 and 100. We want people not to be in facilities and housed. Besides being expensive, it's a terrible way to live. And we want them to have their quality of life. So medicine is looking at ways to to keep that going. So they have to take apart the aging process and they have to look at each part of the aging process. So today we're going to look at the first two pieces that cause us to age. And we start talking about that. That's, right. that's the uh, fertility of human beings that, that decreases after 45. That those hormones of fertility are part of what keeps us young. So that's, one of the things we're going to talk about and how it works. And um, the the second thing that keeps us young is immunity. And we're talking a lot about immunity because of coronavirus and the things that are happening uh, currently. Um, yeah, I, I hear on the news reports and they talk about people that are of certain el- advanced age who have compromised immune systems. Well, every everyone who isn't replacing their hormones or replacing their growth hormone after age 60, have decreased immunity. Well, and is that what compromised immune system means, that your system is breaking down and doesn't do the job it did when you were young and healthy? Right, right. We had, I mean, our best immune system is when we're in our teens. Right. And, um, and we have a thymus that's right behind our breastbone. Um, it is, it's a gland that gets smaller as we get older, especially after 45. And we don't make as many white cells. We don't make as many cells that actually kill bacteria and viruses. So Im- our um, immunizations don't work as well. They, I, I got an immunization for um, the flu this year, and they said, oh, you're getting the old people's immunization, which was stronger than what they give to other people. Yes. To make it work better. Right. Assuming that my immune system isn't very good because I'm 65. Yeah. But that's 
that's probably a good assumption overall. Not all of us have a compromised immune system because of what we do to prevent aging or the aging process. So in the research that we're doing about exactly that, the immune system and the aging process, uh, there's a section in, in one of the books that, that I was reading that talks about as you age, your body mass index changes mm -hmm. and you start to get thicker around the middle mm -hmm. and that women have more of a genetic predisposition to have thicker stomachs mm -hmm. than men do. And they were talking about if you lose weight, if you exercise, mm -hmm. if you try to fight that battle, you can reduce appreciably that middle thickness, but you can't get rid of all of it. You'll still have more body fat around your middle than you have in other places of your body. If if you do those things, but if you but if you also add replacing the hormones, and that wasn't discussed, so I want right. to ask so, you Right. So so if you add replacing uh, testosterone to both men and women, replacing estradiol to women, um, then you can get your middle back. Uh -huh. I mean, I did. You did. Yeah. So those are things that um, yeah, we Yeah, I was, I was very can... conscious of that when I was reading it, but I didn't make the connection that you just made. The, having the testosterone, having the, the estradiol, mm -hmm. having those hormones that go back to the fertility system right. function provides me with the capacity not to have more babies, but to be stronger, to mm -hmm. have better muscle structure, to be have able to stand fat. upright, to have less fat around my stomach. And, and one of the reasons that at BioBalance we, tr we first replaced testosterone, estrogen, and and if we have to, a growth hormone stimulant, those are things that actually do have an effect on all the different areas of aging. So that's one of the, the reasons we start with that. It has the most bang for your uh, dollar, basically, or, yeah. or your effort. But we also require, I mean, you can't just take that and say, I'm going to eat anything I want, and I'm going to lay around and watch television yeah. and not work out. I mean, yeah. you Drink have to... Drink a bottle of wine every day. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah. Right. It's, it's a, you have to also do your part. I mean, we can, we can treat you and give you back the hormones you used to have, but you also have to do the activity you used to have when you were that age. So we can tune up your car, but you have to drive it responsibly. That's right, because yeah. it won't keep you from having an accident exactly. if you don't. So, no. so it, it is how you manage your life. Lifestyle makes a big difference. There was a big article in Journal of the AMA a few weeks ago that said, Changing your lifestyle really changes how you age. You just have to do it in time. You can't wait till you have yeah, five different illnesses yeah. or even 70 and do it. I mean, things have happened. There are some things that you can't reverse by then. So it's best to do it early. Uh -huh. So that so lifestyle does come into this, but replacing, the, replacing hormones to decrease your damage as you age, um, it actually rebuilds muscles. It rebuilds um, bone. It rebuilds your brain. It, all of the the things that testosterone does for both men and women is inherent in the aging process. The first thing that happens is testosterone drops, then growth hormone drops, then women go through menopause later. Uh, but still, all of these things happen, and they cause your body to start aging at that process. People walk in and sit down and start crying and say everything's... My whole body's gone. I I can't I can't think anymore, or I can't get rid of this belly fat, or I don't. I've starved myself. It doesn't work anymore like it used to when I yeah. was young. So everybody's looking for an anti aging answer. They don't really realize that it might be a hormonal answer first and a lifestyle change. Yeah. But but that's what I'm there for to teach them is that they need to first start feeling better and then follow the lifestyle changes so that they can actually have a better uh, aging process and not end up disabled. Yeah. I mean, we just don't want to have to have somebody take care of us all the time. Well, and for me personally, that is such a nightmare. I, mean, I, I have friends and relatives that are older. I have had friends and relatives that have gone to nursing homes that mm -hmm. whose too. bodies break down and they, and they become incapable of sustaining themselves, of getting up out of a chair and walking by themselves. Mm -hmm. They need a walker. They need a brace. They need somebody walking behind them with a belt strap to keep them upright. And and then most of the day they just send, spend sitting in a chair, staring at a television that they're not even watching. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just to, it's so heartbreaking to go to one of these places and see people you care about having this quality of life. And, and even, I'm afraid of that. I am too. 
I'm afraid of that happening to me or to Anybody people that care I about. care about. Yes. Uh, especially, I mean, especially friends who don't embrace the the belief that if we start the anti aging process now, then we can avert our, all of these ourselves from going down this path. Two or three weeks back, we did a podcast that was a testimonial from a friend of yours, mm -hmm. a friend of mine, Judge Dunlop. Mm -hmm. And you had that exact conversation with him. As friends, you had badgered him for several years mm -hmm. about how he was allowing himself to age and break down. And he was complaining about his pains and his aches and blood pressure was going up. Blood he pressure was gaining was, weight. All he was those miserable. Symptoms, yes. And then he finally listened to you. He replaced his fundamental hormones. Mm -hmm. And all, I mean, almost overnight, he was better. And he's mm -hmm. fine and he's healthy and he's strong. And that's was, so exciting to yeah, see. It is. It is. And, it, and now I, we're the same age. So now I, as I age and he ages, I know that as a friend, he's not going to be lost to disease or in, inability. I mean, he was a, he's a very active guy. Oh, he's, he is. I played golf with him. And, and he played the whole round without ever using his driver. He used lesser clubs. <laughs> he was hitting as far as I was hitting. I mean, it's really, yeah, he's, he's really, very strong. He's really in good shape very now. Agile. And he yeah. always was in good shape until this yeah. age, this got, up age got him. Right. Yeah. And, and so with, with Brian, Brian, Brian just needs to follow a, you know, a healthy diet. Yeah. <laughs> and then he'll be fine. Well, that's that a conversation. Just, but that's we'll a good have, point. Well, but that's, we, that's like the other fix piece. Fix the car. Yeah. And then he has to drive it correctly. Right. But he has great muscle and he, and he does not have the pain he had before. Yeah. And he doesn't have the, he was having trouble getting out of a chair at age of 63. I, yes. You know, and that's way too early to have that issue. He would try to get up out of a chair. We were in meetings together the last couple of hours and uh, he would, press up on the table and stand up and then lock his legs and just stand there for 10 or 15 count before he could walk away because he had to get it all under control. Because he was in hurt. pain. Yeah. But he's not in pain anymore, no, clearly. No, he just gets up. Yeah, yeah. And, he's, and he's very active. So that's the kind of changes we want to see. But the uh, I want to go over, yeah. or you can go over, the list of... Well, we, have, we have a list behind us of, of mm -hmm. 10 body Biologic. systems. Mm -hmm. And over the next several weeks, we are going to... Have a series of discussions about each of these body systems, and we want to talk to you about the new and exciting things that medicine is learning about each one of these systems and how they work, what their strengths are, what they contribute to the healthy functioning of the body, and then we want to talk about what doctors are learning about as you age. Just the aging process itself leads to cellular decay and cellular death within your body. Then we call it senescence, and we'll we'll break each one of these down and we'll talk about it. And then the exciting new things that medicine is learning about if we make this intervention at this place at this time, we can slow this down or reverse it, which is mm -hmm. what we're talking about happening mm -hmm. with Brian, what mm -hmm. happened with me, what happened with mm -hmm. Dr. Moffat. These things are known and provable, demonstrable, and you can get them at Biobalance Health. So please listen to our conversations, talk to your own doctors, uh, read the information that's online. Mm -hmm. Think about doing it for your own life. It's really important. So the first one is something called the endocrine system. And we'll talk about that today, and we'll talk a little bit about the immune system, which we previously mentioned. But the endocrine system is a series of glands. They are called ductless glands. And, and they are um, your, your testes, your pituitary, where's my list? The adrenal, adrenal, adrenal glands, ovaries, testes, thyroid, parathyroid, mm -hmm. and pituitary glands. Mm -hmm. And they're ductless glands, meaning they don't produce something like bile that comes out into the body. It doesn't have a little tube that dumps it into something yeah, or they, stores it. They, they're like chemical messenger systems. They send out chemical messengers that go everywhere in your body. Some of them are vigilantes. They're mm -hmm. looking for invaders and mm -hmm. they attack them. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are on-off signals, hurry-up signals, slow-down signals. They, That's generally what they are. They're, yeah. they're either a stimulatory system that stimulates another gland or... They're actually a gland that produces a hormone that goes to cells, goes directly into the cell uh -huh. and turns the cell on or turns the cell off. So these are, they're direct communicators and they're the first step in aging. When they start failing, when we start going through um, a, a loss of our fertility, for men it's 55, it's getting a little younger for men now, yeah. but, but for women it's around 45. When that starts, that's that's the first problem, 
and the first issue we have with aging. So yeah. that's what we were talking about with, with uh, our ovaries and testes making less and less testosterone. Well, it is dropping in age. And there are concerns now about younger men not producing enough viable sperm. Right. And, and the theories have to do with the, the stress level of our lifestyle and the toxins in our system and the diets that mm -hmm. we eat. But boys growing up today are not going to be as reproductively virile as men my age were when we were younger. Well, obesity causes a problem there too because obesity makes estrogen in men and women. Fat makes estrogen. So the more estrogen you have, the less active testosterone, even if you make testosterone, the less active testosterone you make. Yeah. So you don't have as much testosterone to go out there and stimulate sperm production or to go to your cells and make muscle and make your brain grow. So it, it's a real issue. I mean, and so if you have a son who has man boobs, yeah, you need to be aware that that's a, a statement that he's in trouble. That he's making estrogen. Yeah, and that that should be brought to the attention of a pediatrician. And if they don't hear you, then an endocrinologic pediatrician. So somebody who deals in just hormones with children and or adolescents. Yeah. So that's something that sh that should be looked into if you have that that problem or if or if or if your son's just not developing as he should then that's somebody to to go to yeah so there, there was a paragraph in a, in a book that we read that said when your endocrine system is in peak condition you're more likely to look good feel good and successfully defend your system against infection and chronic disease right. so these systems that produce these hormone messengers that tell your body how to operate, tell it what to do, and that work to defend it. And the defense is more in the immune system. But those two systems together balance that stability and make you healthy. As you age, those systems start to have disruptions and break down. And that can be also impacted by the stress of outside life. Life in America today is stressful and there are toxins everywhere. Our diets are inadequate and unhealthy, and they help our system break down. And we, that, if you just sit and watch it, you'll die. I mean, we're all gonna, in, we're in all act, gonna die. So, so I'll say that yeah. in, in activity or not making a decision to to fight aging is is making a decision. It's a it's making the decision to be somebody who ages and probably will end up in a situation where you aren't taking care of yourself, your children are. Now that may sound okay to some people, but that doesn't sound okay to me. And I, 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 did, to I had to take care of my parents and, and my in, my mother-in-law. I mean, that's not something you want your child to do for you. I used to tell my counseling clients all the time, not choosing when they saw themselves in a conflict that they mm -hmm. didn't want to be responsible for the mm -hmm. choice. Not choosing is choosing. It is choosing. And then, so if you don't choose, somebody else will mm -hmm. choose. I used to talk to adolescents a lot. And I would say, you know, as an adolescent, you're kind of in the back seat of the car of your life. Somebody else is driving. Your parents are driving. The police are driving. The school system's driving. When you get ready to drive, you have to get in the front seat. And if you just stay in the back, somebody else will take your life wherever it's going to go. You're not. And that's good advice for, for everybody, actually. Well, but it parallels what you're saying about hormone replacement. Mm -hmm. If you don't hear this message and you don't choose to do anything about improving the quality of your aging process and that has to be a proactive choice diet exercise hormone replacement mm -hmm. then somebody else will control what happens to your life yeah. doctors will make decisions about immediate symptom relief or keeping you alive for two more months by putting a feeding tube in which is not but with no quality of not life. where you want to be no you don't want to be there but i don't had, want to be there i've had friends and relatives who have said I'm never taking another hormone. I'm never taking thyroid. I'm never taking this. I'm never taking that. When they knew they had a problem and they knew they needed to take something, but they thought they were stronger and tougher and better by not replacing their hormones or not replacing their thyroid, when in fact they were just deciding to be sick and to age quickly and in not a comfortable way. So we've talked about the endocrine system. Let's move into talking about the immune system. Mm -hmm. The immune system... Uh, the statement says, research indicates that the reduced efficiency of the immune system as we age is a major contributor to the pathologies of old age, like autoimmune diseases, susceptibility to communicable diseases, and mm -hmm. cancers. Mm -hmm. So I, I visualize the immune system as kind of like policemen running their route, running their circuit. 
millions of cells you know, that are, I, are an army inside your body. Yeah. It's amazing. I actually had a friend who did uh, a counselor mm-hmm. who saw patients that had been diagnosed with cancers. And mm-hmm. they would do visualizations. He would mm-hmm. hypnotize them and they'd do visualizations of armies of T cells and killer cells mm-hmm. finding and attacking the cancer cell, the out of control mm-hmm. cancer cell. And he reported, they reported positive outcomes in, in many cases. Mm-hmm. Not, That's an amazing But it's it's a it's a stimulation parallel to what the medical doctors mm-hmm. are doing as well. Mm-hmm. But his theory was if you can harness your brain to make your body fight for itself, mm-hmm. that will help with the additive things, uh, a chemo or radiation mm-hmm. that doctors can do. Well, chemo and radiation are really, they're trying to kill your cancer, but they kill your auto, they kill your immune cells as well. Okay. Which makes it much more difficult to fight a different kind of cancer or a different, or, or an infection or a, a virus or heal a wound. So right. people who are, are on cancer treatment often are getting something that is killing a lot of their cells besides the cancer. Yeah. So that causes aging. You know, I mean, oftentimes women don't come back if they're cycling. They never cycle again after they've yeah. had chemo because it has been damaging to to their ovaries. Mm-hmm. Their testosterone drops like a rock. They have uh, they have lots of other issues yeah. because of their chemo. So one of the one of the ways to fight cancer and fight your treatment is to also have your testosterone replaced, which stimulates the production of T cells, which stimulates the production um, of T helper cells. It also stimulates the productions of monocytes and and B B lymphocytes that make your immune system work against uh, infection and against, and against uh, and helps you with healing. So you often see people who have had cancer treatment; they can't heal a wound, or they can't they bump into something, they have an yeah. ulceration there, and they can't heal right. because they're not their body's been shut down their immune system shut down right. for a period of time so what what we feel is is good treatment is to somehow get their immune system working again while they're in the cancer cancer therapy my sister-in-law had cancer mm-hmm. she had leukemia mm-hmm. and they put her in the hospital and they killed her immune system mm-hmm. on purpose then they gave her a transfusion a stem cell transfusion mm-hmm. to kill off her existing uh, bone marrow blood production mm-hmm. and replace it with somebody else's a donor mm-hmm. and then she was in isolation for months until that grew. everybody had to wear a mask and gowns and she couldn't be exposed mm-hmm. to any opportunistic infection mm-hmm. any disease and she, now she's healthy she's mm-hmm. alive she doesn't have cancer she's in really good shape but that process of taking your system down to zero mm-hmm. and then trying to rebuild it's it dangerous many people you don't while. survive that yeah i know that's, that's, a we really danger, that. that's a really dangerous. That's a really dangerous. It's a dangerous but effective way to treat a blood cancer because that was a cancer of the immune cells. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so that's you have to actually get rid of those immune cells and everything else and replace them with healthy ones. But there are methodologies. There are techniques. We mm-hmm. do know things now that we didn't know before about how to help that process. So when and we, that's what we're saying. So when we get to the point where. Just naturally, not with cancer or anything else. Naturally, our hormones have dropped. They've been down for a number of years. And then we then lose our immune competence. And so we are not able to fight viruses or uh, pneumonias or anything that goes around that we used to fight easily. And we can't, and we also can't fight other types of cancer. So by by replacing testosterone first and seeing how much you get in terms of immunity, and if you're feeling better, if your white cell count comes back up, because oftentimes I see people with low white cell counts, if you if that happens, you don't need to do something else. But if that doesn't happen, then we need to stimulate your immune system to work with a uh, a peptide called thymosin uh, alpha, alpha one, one. Yeah. and that is a another communicator that stimulates T cells and stimulates T helper cells, which will help your immune system fight infection, fight bacteria fight cancer cells. So we can do that. And we have done that successfully. And and so that's why we took these two as the first two, the endocrine system, the immune system. They work hand in glove to keep your body healthy until they start to break down. And if we can find out the mechanisms of how and why they break down and we can fix them, we can intervene. 
then there's no telling what we can do in terms of extending and improving your quality of life and the length of your life. And preventing illness. Yes. Which is the whole idea. We don't want to be, be sick sick to save ourselves from sickness. We want to be healthier yeah. to save ourselves from sickness. So come back in the coming weeks and listen to the continuation of our discussion around these concerns about body systems in the aging process. Thank you. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.